So you got your purchase offer accepted for a home in the San Francisco Bay Area and now you're in escrow. What's escrow? What are the moving parts for real estate transaction on the buy side? I'm covering all of that in this episode right after this. Welcome back, my name is Dale Corpus. I'm a realtor in the Tri-Valley area in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area and I post videos every Friday about all things real estate. So you might be wondering what's going on once you have your offer accepted? What are the moving parts of the transaction? What are these entities called title and escrow? And what's the lender doing? What's everybody doing? Okay. So let's just have a quick overview of what's going on in the transaction. First and foremost, you probably already heard of escrow in effect, uh, depending on where you are in the country and you might have used the phrase, we're opening escrow or it could be opening title or opening the file with your attorney depending on where you're at. So here in the San Francisco Bay Area, we don't use attorneys. We use escrow companies, uh, but in most cases, when you open escrow, that means you have a fully ratified purchase agreement. That means both parties have agreed and come to terms on what is going to happen. And now the third party escrow uh, is taking this contract. They're going to interpret what they perceive to be the agreement, and then they're going to put it in their own terms. And these are escrow instructions. So escrow is essentially a neutral third party working on the behalf of both the buyer and seller and getting this transaction closed and they follow all the ratified purchase contract as instructions on what to do. So once escrow has the ratified purchase contract, they're going to work and make sure that they are coordinating as much of this transaction as they need to, to make sure that everything comes together to a smooth close. Escrow is going to be doing things such as collecting money. So once your wire, uh, your earnest money deposit, also known as your EMD, escrow is going to be taking that and holding that in their account. They're not going to let the seller have it. They're not going to do anything with it. It's just going to be held there and they're handling monies essentially. So when it comes time to also wire any down payment funds or any closing costs money, they're essentially taking this money and they are dispersing it as needed. So on closing day, once escrow has all these documents and the fund from either party, they're going to take these funds as necessary and disperse them. So for example, you're going to have your new insurance policy activated on that day. They're also going to take the monies from your new loan, from your new lender, and they're going to pay off the seller's lender if applicable. They're also going to pay county transfer tax and city transfer tax as well if applicable. And they're going to pay off uh, any HOA transfer fees and HOA escrow documents. If there was a home warranty as part of the purchase agreement, that will also get paid through ESCO. So they're going to handle the disbursement of all these funds essentially that everybody agreed upon beforehand. A ton of administrative things happen before a real estate transaction can close. Escrow officers make sure every single item that is needed to be done gets done. So everybody uh, is in the transaction working up towards closing day and escrow is the one that pretty much is going to be the neutral third party. Then everything's going through and they're organizing and coordinating all the stuff to happen for closing day. And next, you have title. Now title plays an important role because when you're buying property, what are you really getting? You're getting a piece of paper that's saying, you are the lawful owner of this property and nobody else has claim to it. But what happened in the past when somebody would say, okay, I'm gonna buy this property from you. And then 10 years down the road, they find out that the seller's grandson says, no, I actually have a share in that property. And they would come and sue 
the new owner of the property. Well, that's old fashioned stuff now because we have what's called title insurance. So the title company plays a huge important role in the transfer of real estate because they are doing their investigations on title. In fact, what's unique about title insurance companies as opposed to most other insurance companies is that title is insuring the past where most insurance companies insure the future. So if you have a car insurance policy and you get in an accident in the future, that's the only time you're gonna get paid off. You can't go out, take out an insurance policy for your car just to cover an accident you had yesterday. But on the other hand, title insurance insures the past, meaning if there are any claims that anybody had to the property prior to the date you closed and took title to that property, they're going to take responsibility for that with certain exceptions, but they're going to be doing their own research. They're going to be investigating the entire history of the title on this property to make sure that they are competent in issuing a title insurance policy for that property. And that's essentially what title is for, right? So they're making sure that you as a buyer are getting a clean title and handed over and that if there are any claims that arise down the road that you get covered and reimbursed and they make those troubles go away. Okay, so that way you don't have to worry about Billy's grandson coming after you and suing you personally, and you don't have to argue in court as to why Billy's grandson doesn't have claim to your title anymore. You don't have to worry about that because title takes that out of the picture. So title plays an important role in this. They're also going to be making sure that you have a clean transfer of title when you close. They're going to be taking that deed the grant deed from the seller down to the county recorder's office and get the file recorded publicly, which actually makes you the full owner. So title is essentially working directly hand in hand with escrow to make sure that everything comes together as agreed upon in the end. You are delivered a clean bill, a clean deed on that property, saying that you are the rightful and lawful owner of that property. And if anything comes up down the road, well, you know who to contact. So title plays an extremely important role in this and that gets you the clean title at the end, which is of course what we're all in this for. Now the third major moving part of the transaction, of course, is your lender. So if you are working with a lender, if you're not buying a property all cash, which is probably 95% of you out there, then you are going to be working hand in hand with providing anything the lender is going to need. So once you actually have a ratified purchase agreement, both parties have signed, the lender is going to be one of the first people to get a copy of that so they can get to work on your loan. Now, some of the things a letter is going to be uh, initially doing are sending you things such as loan disclosures. Up until they close, make sure you understand you need to be working hand in hand with your lender. If they're asking for certain documents, uh, asking for supporting letters or anything like that, and they have a question about, you want to make sure you're getting back to them as quickly as possible because the lender has a lot of moving parts and typically getting the loan approved is one of the things that takes the longest in a transaction. Okay, so typically speaking, that could be anywhere from, you know, two weeks to on the fast end to 21 or 30 days, depending on the lender you're working with. So during the process, your lender is going to be working diligently on getting your loan file approved and understand that your loan officer is going to be working on the file, but they're going to have to get approval from the underwriter. So anything the underwriter uh, writes as an approval condition for your loan, uh, your loan officer is gonna be working diligently in trying to get those documents from you. So for example, the lender's underwriter might say, hey, we need a letter of exclamation for this $3,000 deposit on June 1st. And in that case, you're probably simply going to open up a, a word processing application uh, and type up a letter to explain the source of the $3,000 deposit and oftentimes show documentation of the deposit that supports 
your, your true written explanation. If you say that 3,000 deposit was a check you wrote to yourself from one of your other bank accounts, don't be surprised if the letter wants to see a copy of the $3,000 canceled check, as well as the bank statement for the source of the $3,000. So lenders like to see paper trails and documentation. They might want you to source that. They might want you to track this and that. Whatever it is, they're going to be different conditions like this. Uh, the underwriter and the loan processors are going to be looking through your loan file and working diligently through this entire escrow process to make sure that you get your loan approved. So there you have it, folks. Those are the main spokes of the wheel behind the scenes that are working to get you to the finish line. You have escrow as the go-to between for everybody, title, making sure you get a clean bill of sale and title at close, and your lender, of course, making sure you get a clean a loan approval so they can actually get you the funds to close on the purchase. If you found this helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You may also want to check out my past video on how to find the best mortgage rates in the San Francisco Bay Area. And the link to that video is on the top corner of this screen. Again, I'm Dale Corpus from EXP Realty in San Ramon, California, and I help buyers and sellers throughout the Bay Area and the Tri-Valley. And I'll see you on my next video.